Hi folks, I'm Matt and welcome to My Expanded Universe, a show where I go through the entire EU in chronological order as best I know how. Check this place out. It's a restaurant, steak restaurant. I'd never eaten there, but I saw that it was established in 1977. That's a good year. Star Wars came out. I came out. 77 is such a great year. All right, you know what? I've been talking about the comic books for weeks now. It's time to move on and talk about a good old hardback book. Let's talk about that. It's The Cestus Deception, written by Stephen Barnes. Now in this, Obi-Wan goes to Ord Cestus because the Cestus Corporation has made a deal with the Separatists that they're going to start producing JK droids, Jedi killer droids, and Obi-Wan Kenobi must go on a diplomatic mission to convince them that's not a good idea. <laughs> and the Confederacy is not all that it cracks up to be. Now, interesting thing, on the cover you see Count Dooku. However, he is hardly in this, so I don't know why they put him on the cover unless just to put him on the cover for no reason. Kit Fisto, who gets a little bit of icon on the cover there, uh, is actually in it a lot, as is Ventress. I don't really consider that a spoiler because I think if you look on Wikipedia, I think it even says Ventress is in it too. Um, just reading the summary. So what did I think about this book? Well, first off, this book is the least popular Star Wars Expanded Universe book on the market. Yes, it sold less than A New Dawn. To be honest, I don't know why this was a low-selling one. I actually enjoyed this a lot more than I did a bunch of other Star Wars books. Uh, one of the reasons is, uh, it's, it's basically your typical, this is before Filoni's Clone Wars storyline. So you got to remember, he's not really General Kenobi. He's still a Jedi, you know, trying to work through diplomatic solutions to everything. It kind of rips you away from the war battles that you hear from the Republic series. And you get to see a different uh, Obi-Wan, but I like that. I think Stephen Barnes does a great job. I think he's a great author, and I actually think it's a good book. Now, to be honest, is it in my top 10? No. It, would it be in my top 20? No. Would it be in my top 30? Uh, maybe not. Does that mean it's a bad book? No, it doesn't mean it's a bad book. It's actually not that bad. Uh, like I said, you know, it, it, there's, there's stuff that happens. Kit Fisto, you get to know him a little bit better, and that's good. Ventress is good in it. Is it that all imperative to the Clone Wars? I would say no, which maybe would be why it was panned. I really don't know why it sold so little. On top of that, uh, Stephen Barnes also wrote a short ebook called The Hive. Now, the hive takes place in between the Cestus Deception chapters. I don't remember what chapters <laughs> off the top of my head, but it's just a little ebook story. This is back in the day when ebooks were just coming out, and I was so against ebooks. And I grudgingly bought it because I had to have it, and it wasn't that big of an impact into the story. In fact, it is skippable. You don't have to read it in storyline. If you want to get it, I'm sure it's still available. I'm sure it's still cheap. And I'm sure it's still forgettable the next day after you sleep on it. But The Cestus Deception was one of those books that even though it goes forgettable, does have some significance. Uh, folks, they didn't make that many Clone Wars novels. We talk about the Clone Wars being just jam-packed and stuff. I'm talking about in comic books, they jam-packed it. And of course, in TV shows. So you just cram that uh, schedule up. And yeah, the timeline's a little messed up about when did Anakin get crowned a Padawan and whatnot, and you've all had your theories on the channel, and yeah, all of them could work. And you're gonna have to kind of just forgive some of the stories that I'm putting in line. You're like saying, well, mate, wait, Matt, wasn't he mentioned as a Padawan in that story? <sighs> yes, but you know what? To be honest, it d does it really matter? There's so much going on. Yeah, you could move this forward. I, th I think you could. I have seen in, well, no, I haven't seen in actually any timeline where they moved it before a lot of the other stuff, but you could. But then in that case, you have to move the majority of the books and comic books before he becomes a knight. So to, in my opinion, start reading Clone Wars. This is where I would throw the book in as well. Uh, Pablo puts it in and his uh, reader's companion, and this is kind of where I'd put it in the timeline as well. As for the contradiction that it has against Filoni's Clone Wars series, meaning in the book, he says there's never been a traitor clone. In the uh, t 
TV show, there was a traitor clone, right? So why would he say that if this would have happened before that time? Don't worry about that. Maybe this came out before that episode. Or remember what I told you about Force and Destiny. It was an RPG book that came out by Fantasy Flight right before they switched over to the new canon. Now in that book, there's actually a little, it's like a paragraph of a story about someone going, hey, I hear these Clone Wars tapes we're watching, like the, the newsreels. Remember, Filoni always started them off with, uh, uh, you know, terror on ter uh, Camino, the Tell Shepherdess of it, you know, kind of like an old newsreel. They said, hey, I hear the, what's these what newsreels? They're being compromised by Compnor. Compnor is getting into those films, and what they're showing you isn't exactly what is true. So basically, they basically retconned all of Filoni's Clone War, for, Wars for us and said, it's propaganda by Compnor. So where it, it differs from the expanded universe, then Filoni's Clone Wars is wrong. It's Compnor, you know, propaganda. I love that. Thank you so much for Fantasy Flight for giving us that one last retcon before they flipped over to the new canon. Uh, because if that's the case, then you can just ignore any of the contradictions in Filoni's Clone Wars. But folks, most importantly, enjoy the Clone Wars. There's a lot of good stuff there. Yes, it is a jam-packed one. Yes, it is very, very busy. There's a, so many stories in there, and it is aggravating, especially when you're trying to make a timeline out of it, believe me. But also trust me that some of these stories are worth it. Stephen Barnes is a great author. Will you remember this years later? Probably not. Is it worth reading? I would say so. But if you disagree, let me know in the comments what you thought about The Cessus Deception, one of the least read EU novels in existence. All right, folks, that's all the time I have for today. And man, there's a lot of people here now. I keep getting interrupted. I keep getting weird stares at me whenever I'm talking. They say, why is he talking about, what is EU? <laughs> I gotta go. Let's go find a new place. I'm out of here.